Number 63. The element cobalt exists in two oxidation states. So we have cobalt 2 and cobalt 3, and the ions form many complexes. The rate at which one of the complexes of cobalt 3 was reduced by iron 2 in water was measured. Determine the activation energy of the reaction from the following data. And lovely data set, two points for us here. We have two different temperatures and two different K values, which is the rate constant. Okay. So I love these types of questions because whenever I see that they give me two temperatures and two rate constants and they're looking for an activation energy, I know exactly what to do because we are going to be doing one formula and one formula only, and that formula is this. It looks intimidating, but I promise you it's not, especially if you have good old Calci, right? A TI-84 or a TI-84 plus CE, which is the one I have here, or a TI-89. Um, you should be good to go. If you have any other calculator, you might be able to do this. It's just got to be a graphing calculator uh, the quick way. So here we go. Now, in, th in this case, they gave us two different temperatures and, and rate constant values, and they go together. So at 293 Kelvin, I got a rate constant of 0 0.054 per second. 298 Kelvin, I got 0.1 per second for my rate constant. So we will categorize these as K1, K2s, and T1 and T2s. So maybe we'll make the first one, I don't know, the first T1 and K1. So, and the, the, the second one has the twos, right? So 293 would be my T1 and 0 0.054 would be my K1. And then my 298 would be T2 and my 0.1 would be my K2. Now all we have to do is just plug those formulas into here. K1 and K2, T2 and T1. The EA, just know that EA is always activation energy. So whenever you see activation energy, it's always an EA value. And that's just going to be what we're solving for, so X. So we should know the R value. And the R value is a constant number, right? It's that 8.314. You use 8.314 if you're using energy values. And the unit for your R value is joules per mole times Kelvin. That's why the temperatures got to be in Kelvin. So if they did give you Celsius in here, you would just have to change them all to Kelvin, and then you could use the formula. So let's get started. Ln of... K1 over K2, so 0 0.054 divided by 0 0.100, and this equals my EA over R, so X over 8.314, times 1 over the temp minus 1 over the other temp. And when I was learning this formula, I, I remembered it as, okay, K1 came first and then came then came K2, so then it got flopped. So if I said my first K1, the second T's got to go first. So it's kind of like reversed. So now I'm going to put my 298 first and then my 293. Okay, so here is where um, Calci is going to do mo you know, most of the heavy lifting because we can plug this value all in one shot on the calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the calculator, press natural log ln of 0 0.054 divided by, oh, that's not divided by, that's parentheses, divided by 0.1. Close your parentheses and bada bing bada boom, you already just solved this mess into one number. So negative 0 0.6162, we'll say. Now for right now, I can't really do anything with this because it's with the, uh, the variable. So I'm just going to leave this as x over 8.314. Okay. But then let Calci do the heavy lifting again to simplify this whole mess into one value. So it's going to be 1 divided by 298 minus 1 divided by 293. There we go. So this is now all being multiplied by negative 5.726 times 10 to the negative fifth. 
Okay. So now all we got to do is just clean this up a little bit, right? I have two numerators on the right hand side. I have this x value and then I have this number, right? So I can just simplify this and put them into one single fraction. These go together. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just put like a, a little border here and I'll say negative 0.6162 equals negative 5.726 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's being times by the x value divided by the 8.314. So now, here just comes a cross multiplication, right? We're going to take this value and multiply it by this value. I'm going to take the exact value here just so that we don't run into any errors with rounding. So this times 8.314. Okay, and we get negative 5.13 equals, right? Actually, 5.123. So we'll say that 5.123 equals the negative 5.72 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's being times by x. So we know what to do now, right? Solve for x, we gotta divide by that number on both sides. Activation energy should always be a positive, so here is we're dividing by two negatives, so it looks good to me. Times 10 to the negative fifth, this gets canceled out. And I'm going to take the full number, so I'm going to take this and divide it by this number. Press enter. That looks good to me. Maybe I'll put the answer up here. Right? Yeah, I guess over here. X was equal to the activation energy. And in this case, uh, maybe we'll give two sig figs. So 8.9 times 10 to the... One, two, three, four. And this would be in the same units as the R value. The units of the R value are joules per mole. So this would be joules per mole. Since these values are going to be so large, right? Generally, your joules are going to be large. Uh, you know, on a test or quiz, they might ask you to find it in kilojoules. They didn't say that specifically here. Right, they just said find the activation energy. So if you just needed to solve for kilojoules, you could always take that number and just divide by a thousand. So it would be like 89 kilojoules. So maybe I'll just put that up here. So either answer is fine. Um, whether you want it in joules or kilojoules, and that's it. There we go. See, pretty simple formula, right? Uh, Calci always makes it easier. So that's it. What'd you think? Thank you so much for coming here and viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. We're almost at 40,000 subscribers. And honestly, it's, it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much for coming here, for trusting us to help you guys out in your classes. Uh, we really do love helping you guys out. And um, yeah, check the channel out. We also got physics and math videos with more subjects hopefully coming your way soon. So yeah, let's keep going. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Have a great day. Bye-bye.